So you guys know From Software, right? If you're into video games, I'm pretty sure you have. They've been killing it with good games for this past decade with the Soulsborne series and most recently Sekiro. But that's the thing, it's only been for the past decade. Despite being one of the golden boys in the industry, not many people know or even care about what they've made prior to the Soul series. And before someone comments, yes, I know you Armored Core fans are out there, but your average video game player ain't looking out for an Armored Core 6. In fact, a lot of the types of games FromSoft used to make prior to Demon Souls have been middle shelf jank forgotten in time. The type of games you would have rented out for a couple days at like a Blockbusters or some shit. Yeah, remember that place? Anyway, the last of these type of games FromSoft would make before moving on to greener pastures is the game we're talking about today. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the shallow Ninja Gaiden knockoff, Ninja Blade. Come on, impress me. Let's see what you can do with that So the year is 2015, a parasite called Alpha Worm has been discovered to turn people into raging demons. A massive outbreak of the stuff happens in the city of Tokyo and a special task force of super ninja have been dispatched to deal with the problem. You play as one of these super ninja named Ken and with the support of his father Kanbe and teammate Kuro, Ken's able to defeat this giant spider with ease. However, it's revealed after the fact that Ken's father and Kuro are infected with the virus also. They kill the rest of the task force and almost kill Ken by stabbing him through the chest. Also, they kill this guy who I'm guessing is a close friend to Ken. Anyway, after a brief recovery, Ken is deployed back to the city by himself. And for the rest of the game, you're pretty much a one man army up in this bitch, dealing with the outbreak by yourself. Okay, so as far as the visuals, you can see that this game is butt fucking ugly. It has all the indicators of a game with a minuscule budget. I'm talking about wooden faces, poor lip syncing, low wall textures, cheap looking fire, and one of the most lifeless looking Tokyos in any game ever. Worst part about it is that you're here for most of the game and there's barely any change in scenery. The animations are pretty stiff and the enemy designs are really nothing to write home about. But you know, the subjective look of the game is one thing. If the game barely runs, even after tinkering around in the settings, then all hope is lost. Yes, this is one of those games that performs like crap. I'm talking about enemies clipping through ceilings and bosses getting stuck in place, forcing you to do the whole thing over again. The PC port is complete ass. No matter how powerful your rig is, the game's gonna run at a dog shit 20 frames per second. Apparently you have to set the frame rate to variable, but I didn't see any difference. And before some Someone says it, yes, my PC is more than capable of handling an old ass game like this. But you know, the frames were only one part of the problem. The resolution options are what really messed my game up. By default, the game set at a shitty 768 resolution. And as soon as I set it to 1080p, the game would then crash every time I tried to start it. Worst part about it, with this being an unknown game, no one's bothered to even code a solution. Man, it's a good thing I still have a 360 lying around. Got the 360 version which bypasses most of the PC ports bullshit, but mostly when it comes to the resolution and starting issues. The game for the most part runs at a stable 30 frames per second, but there are a handful of moments where it dips back to 20. Mostly when it comes to the boss battles, for some reason this game just can't handle its own set pieces. The game is so poorly optimized, I couldn't even finish it due to it freezing every time it reached this part of the final battle. So whether you play the 360 or the PC version, you're screwed either way. Way, the game just looks and performs horrendously regardless. Come <laughs> on. 
So the gameplay of Ninja Blade is really nothing out of the ordinary for a hack and slash game. If you played any of these type of games, you already know the deal. You're an OP motherfucker with the sword with a bunch of weapons and magic that takes out waves of demons room by room. Heavily influenced by games like Ninja Gaiden and Devil May Cry, but without any of the depth those games have, at least with the combat. Yeah, the combat doesn't feel very good. Never mind the stiff looking animations, there's not much in terms of combo variety. You like the look of this combo right here? Well, you're gonna be seeing it for the whole game with only a slight variation of it here and there. To be fair, you are given two other swords that are of different speeds and playstyles, but the limited amount of move sets are with those weapons as well. There's also the fact that the weapon balancing between the three swords is pretty terrible. The big stone sword is really the only weapon you should be using since it staggers most enemies and bosses. It's also required to break the armor off of a lot of bosses, and it's used pretty often to break through walls, so not much incentive to use the other ones. As for the spells, you have the shuriken that switches between different elements elements, fire, wind, and lightning. All three are your typical AoE moves that help you out when you're getting jumped, which really won't happen that much since enemies are dumb as shit. They're the type of brain dead enemies you would see in like a Dynasty Warriors game where they're just waiting to get their asses kicked. The bosses are pretty pathetic too, but they fall into a different category of being too scripted. And what I mean by that is that with most of them, you're just going to be running around avoiding their attacks until they pause and show their weak spots. Sounds like typical boss battle stuff, but with the case of this game, the bosses take a while to get through moves and don't show their weak spots for very long. They take a while to get through, and you're not really being challenged, so they're pretty freaking boring. That's not even to mention the fact that you fight many of these bosses several times throughout the game with no added mechanics. They also thought they were slick with some of the later levels in the game which are just repeats of previous ones. This leads me to the platforming and the breaks from combat, which are just okay at best. The platforming is really nothing to write home about. You can run really fast, which is visually cool, but goddamn does it suck as a way to dodge attacks. It's also really clunky when you're running on walls, almost like there's a delay with the button inputs. You have these rail shooting sections, which just screams to me that the developers didn't really know how to diversify their gameplay. They're few and far between, and they're not really bad, but they do go on for more than I would like. I won't fault them too much here, since it's not like the other aspects of the game are that good anyway. Did I mention that this game has quick time events? Because holy shit, this game has a lot of quick time events. Never before have I seen so many of them in one game. Every cutscene, every boss, and damn near every enemy will have you doing these. I'm not exaggerating when I say that it's half of the game. Jesus, no wonder everything else about this game is mediocre. This is where all the effort went. Apparently FromSoft wanted to mimic the feeling of Hollywood action films with these sequences, and yeah, they do serve as cool looking spectacles, but god damn man, whoever implemented these needed to chill the fuck out. Nobody wants to play an action game that plays itself half of the time. Know what I mean? Oh, and look, 
some old friends. So after a couple missions of kicking infected ass, Ken confronts his rival Kuro who has taken Ken's token black friend and turned him into a mutant. After kicking his ass, Ken then confronts Kuro himself who goes on about Ken being immune to the infected and being made in a lab to combat the outbreak. He goes all demonic, Ken puts him down, Kuro tries to commit suicide taking Ken with him, but it doesn't go too well. Ken's father saves him and informs Ken of his voluntary betrayal in order to get close to the hive of the Alpha Worm. Ken then heads underground in order to destroy the hive, but quickly finds out that he can't kill it even with the Ninja Blade. The final battle ensues with Pops himself on top of Tokyo Tower, where after multiple transformations, it is brought down by the Ninja Blade along with the hive. Months later, Ken's asked to become the leader of the new task force, and then the game ends with a menacing look from Ken. Okay, so just like the gameplay, the story of this game is pretty freaking shallow. Not that I expected some Last of Us levels of storytelling, but shit, at least make me feel something for these characters. Ken is just your generic ninja badass, nothing really special about him. The other characters are just vessels for the plot. Like after the big betrayal in the beginning of the game, these guys just peace out until the end and you're just left killing things with no backstory. I think they wanted you to care about this guy that dies in the beginning of the game cause they bring him back later as a boss battle like oh my god look what happened to him even though in the beginning of the game he only had like a couple of lines but whatever. If you don't get a move on Kudo's not gonna leave any of those maggot bags for you kid. Oh my god, is that Carrie Payton? Hey, look who it is. I figured if I turned on my suit tracker, you guys would find me. How are you holding up? Where's my father? Oh, you want to give him his sword back, is that it? Give it here. I'll see that he gets it. Oh my god, is that Yuri Lowenthal? Damn, these guys must have needed a paycheck. The voices aren't bad, but good lord, look at that lip syncing. Two blades are quicker than one. Use them against faster creatures. What's also weird is that the language is constantly switching from English to Japanese. What's weird about this is that the English and Japanese voices sound nothing alike, so when the language does switch, it's really jarring. Yeah. Yeah, right. Don't worry, I got it. You also have goofy ass shit like this. We've burrowed so deep into the ground, they'd have to drop a thousand nukes just to get our attention. Maybe this'll get your attention. <laughs> Amateurs. You worms gotta learn how to tie a better knot. Okay, you want to play too? Don't let the suit fool you, kid. I was in the trenches before you were even a danger in here. I learned jujitsu from your own master, Kanbei Ogawa. The story in this game is really just not anything to take seriously. Well, that's all I gotta say about this. To sum it up, this game's a fake ass Ninja Gaiden, which is ironic considering Team Ninja would later copy the Dark Souls formula. The big difference is Neo is actually pretty decent. This? Nah bruh. Crappy combat, crappy movement, poorly optimized, way too many QTEs, and a narrative not really worth a damn. However, for the few that don't mind experiencing cheesy garbage, this is one you can add to your list. Anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time.